Today, I'm going to give you the seven superpowers that every entrepreneur needs to take their business to its highest potential. In fact, these particular superpowers are things that you can find, are you ready for this? In some of the most successful immigrants who have come to the United States and created empires. And so I'm gonna share with you what I call the immigrant mindset, or better known as the immigrant edge. And there are seven superpowers. So let's get started. First of all, you know Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know that the man was from Austria, or is from Austria, and he immigrated to the United States. And he started off as a aspiring bodybuilder. While he was attempting to become a bodybuilder, Arnold Schwarzenegger was laying bricks on homes, doing plumbing and doing odd construction jobs. He barely spoke English, but he found a way. And today he is not only the Arnold Schwarzenegger that we know as the Mr. Olympia champion, he is one of the biggest holders of real estate in this country. And he of course is one of the most coveted actors on the silver screen. You should also know that Arnold became governor of the state of California. And I tell you this, if he was an actual like born here citizen, he would probably become the president at some point. Then you've got Gary Vaynerchuk. We all know and love Gary Vaynerchuk. He's one of the most passionate, the most heartfelt, the most heart-driven entrepreneurs on the planet. The man hustles, he grinds, and he delivers the goods. What most people don't know is that Gary immigrated from Belarus, communist union, part of the Soviet Union at the time. And when he immigrated from Belarus, his father started a tiny little liquor store. And Gary was able to take this little liquor store and make it into a $25 million a year empire. And you would think that, well, that's pretty impressive in and of itself. But it wasn't until Gary's empire really took off back in 2009. On the heels of the massive economic crash that we had, Gary built Vayner Media. And you got to wonder, how did this immigrant connect the dots and build a massive empire, not just once, but twice, during economic downturns. And I'm gonna share that with you, and you're gonna see how Gary has the immigrant edge as well, and how we're gonna install that into you so that you can make these really quick moves that explode your business and launch it into massive success. Then you've got Mila Kunis. You know her, she's from That 70s Show. And she was actually from Soviet Union as well, specifically Soviet Ukraine. Now, now Mila came to this country, again, didn't speak English, um, really the her whole family was broke. They didn't have any money and all she ever wanted to do was act and dance and, and be in front of people and entertain. And her mom was really broke and was doing her best to take her to acting auditions. And one of the auditions that she got, they were actually casting for an 18 year old girl to act in a show that took place in the 70s. Now you've probably seen that show, haven't you? Well, guess what? She was only 14, but she went for it anyway. And we all know what happened next. She got the part, and lo and behold, they rewrote the entire script and the entire show so that she can be 14 years old and not 18 years old because they loved her so much. What edge did she have? What, what advantage did Mila have that caused her to go and audition, win that audition, and crush and dominate? And today, she's all over the silver screens and killing it. Then you've got this guy, this guy, he's a foreigner, he's an immigrant, he's me, right? And of course, I come from Soviet Armenia, at the time, I'm a part of the Soviet Union, just like all the rest here, and uh, pretty interesting upbringing. Came to this country at the age of six, I didn't speak English, um, we didn't understand the culture, we certainly had no financial resources. All my dad knew was that we are coming to this country because it's, there's freedom and opportunity. And as long as we work hard and pay it forward in this country, well, guess what happens next? I'll tell you what happens next. You become successful. But I'm gonna tell you the exact immigrant mindset that I had did help me go from being broke and having low self-esteem, low confidence, having no knowledge of business or being an entrepreneur, and now owning an eight-figure empire, and of course, overseeing 17 different companies that I own equity in. And it's an absolute pleasure to be able to work with the business partners that I have, to make the impact that I make, and to see my organizations grow 
you know, leaps and bounds because of these seven factors that I'm going to share with you. So let's get started because these immigrant mindsets that I'm going to share with you are guaranteed to give you the immigrant edge. So what are they? Thing number one is you got to come hungry and stay hungry. I don't care if you're an immigrant or not. What I want you to know is that if you get into a business, most people get into a business, they are hungry, they are driven, they are excited, they know it's their purpose, they know it's their gift. I know you know that feeling, I know you do. The biggest problem I've seen is most people get satisfied and they stall out. Now, if you can come hungry and stay hungry like an immigrant, you will kick ass and take names and reach your fullest potential, I promise you. The difference between the people who start off strong and continue versus the ones who just fall off the bandwagon are because those who continue to massive success are the ones that stayed hungry. Those who fell off the bandwagon are the ones who got satisfied, got complacent, and kind of gave up, right? You never give up. You never try and maintain your success because the moment you try and maintain your success, you lose it all because there is no maintenance. You can't maintain your health. You're either improving your health or you're losing your health. You can't maintain a good marriage. You're either improving your marriage or it's deteriorating, right? You can't maintain anything. Their maintenance does not exist. You're either growing or you're dying. And so you got to come hungry and stay hungry as an entrepreneur if you want to succeed, crush, and dominate. Thing number two, mindset number two, is that if you don't have the resources, you can't just stop, man. Do you understand that? If you don't have the resources, you don't have the money, you don't have the time, you don't have the advantage, you don't have the information, you don't have the knowledge, you don't have the coaches, you don't have the expertise, who gives a shit, right? If you don't have the resources, then you've got to get resourceful. I don't know of any one person who says, well, you know, I don't have the resources, so I'm going to stop now, and then somehow magically got successful. That never happened. That person does not exist, right? Every single person that I talk to you about who's an immigrant who is now massively successful, there was a time and a place, many times in fact, in many places where they simply did not have the resources, the money, the connections, the people, the information. And when you don't have the resources, you have to get resourceful. For me, I'll give you a great example on what you can do. When I didn't have the resources to get a coach, I looked into my clients. I used to be a personal trainer and I looked into my clients and I saw all of these clients who are affluent, who are doing well for themselves, and I picked one out. His name was Jim Franco, and I said, Jim, I will train you one extra time per week for free if you will just let me pick your mind in between our workouts. And he became my, my resource as a coach because he was successful as an entrepreneur. I wanted to be successful. I wanted to be where he is in life, and so I knew that as long as I can be resourceful, give him some of my time of training him, that he would give me some of his time of knowledge and wisdom. So never believe the fact that if you don't have resources that you have to stop. If you don't have resources, you keep going and you get resourceful, and I promise you, you will succeed in life. Pillar number three, speed of implementation is king. And I can tell you this, I know a dude who's read over 600 books on business, personal development, mindset, and sales. 600 books, and he's still making under $100,000 a year. Why do you think that is? He's got all the information. Lord knows he is not lacking information, knowledge, and wisdom. He's read over 600 books on business, mindset, personal development, and sales. I'm going to say that again. He is not lacking knowledge, wisdom, and information. If you gain knowledge, if you gain information, the only way you're going to monetize that, the only way you're going to make an impact, the only way you're going to grow to your fullest potential in business and as an entrepreneur is through speed of implementation. The person who takes the fastest action always wins, even if you take imperfect action. Listen, there's no such thing as perfect action. There just simply isn't. The reason for that is you don't have enough information to take the perfect action, and if you wait for perfection, it'll never happen. But what you can do is you can take imperfect action and use speed of implementation to launch and deploy your business and then course correct as you go, right? All right. Pillar number four, adversity is an advantage. This is something that all immigrants who are successful in a massive way use to their advantage. And I want you to use this as well. Think about this. If you go into a gym, you are dealing with adversity, right? You are lifting weights, you are bench pressing, you are squatting, you are shoulder pressing. And that adversity causes your muscles to burn and to get sore the next few days. You are sweating, you're getting hot and sweaty, right? That's an adversity. But that adversity produces an advantage. And that advantage is greater strength, greater cardiovascular endurance, right? You look better, you feel better, you have more energy. And so in business, you want to welcome adversity. Don't try and 
Don't try and steer clear of adversity. I'm not saying go make stupid decisions. But what I am saying is you want to welcome adversity. You want to welcome challenges. You want to welcome the suck factor. There will be a point where things really suck. And you will have that happen a lot as an entrepreneur way more than you think you deserve. I promise you that. But every time you hit the suck factor, just understand that that is an adversity. And just like weights in the gym build your muscles, right? Adversity, challenges, failures, setbacks, bottlenecks. In business, build your mental muscles and your entrepreneurial muscles. And you notice I point at your heart. I point at the heart when I talk about the entrepreneurial muscles because it takes heart to be an entrepreneur. It takes heart. It is easy to own a job. It is easy to own a job and be self-employed. It is a whole other thing to build an empire and to reach your fullest potential in the face of competition and to be the market leader, to be the dominant leader. That is an entrepreneur and it takes heart to do that. So understand that adversity will come and when it does, look at it as another source of resistance that's going to help build your entrepreneurial muscles, right? So that you can reach your next level of success. And once you reframe that and you look at adversity as an advantage and not as a setback, you will actually go, okay, all right, here's a new challenge, a new roadblock, a new setback. What am I going to achieve from this? And what outcome will I have when I'm done? Because you know that every time you're faced with adversity, as long as you fight your way through it, you end up making more money and making a bigger impact on the people that you serve. All right, thing number five, pillar number five is to be decisive. I can tell you this about all successful people, immigrants or not, is they are fast decision makers. You need to be decisive, right? Elon Musk, there's another immigrant for you. Elon Musk, and I was just reading his biography because my good friend Craig Valentine recommended it to me. Great biography. And Elon Musk was one of the fastest decision makers on the planet. He's actually an immigrant to the United States, right? He's got a heavy uh, South African accent. If you've ever heard him talk, you can tell that he's got this, what is that, a British accent? Is that a South African accent? It's a South African accent because he's an immigrant to this country. The man has created SpaceX and, and Tesla, right? He is going to take people to Mars and colonize Mars. Make no mistake about it, he is a very fast decision maker. Does it mean that every decision that Elon Musk makes is the right decision? Absolutely not. But when you make a decision, if it's the wrong decision, you're going to find out soon enough and you're going to course correct. And this is where Colin Powell, General Colin Powell, has a really good rule. And when I read his book, I, I extracted this little wisdom from his book, and it's the 40-70 rule. And here's what he means by that. As long as he has as little as 40% of the information that he needs, he is ready to make a decision. And all he needs is a maximum of 70% to make a decision. What is he saying? that he does not need all the information. He's not going to wait to be decisive. He will make the decision now when he has as little as 40% and up to 70% of the information. He will be decisive, make the decision, and if it happens to be the best decision, fantastic. And if it's the wrong decision, that's okay because he will course correct, he will move on, and he will keep making changes until he gets it down right. And the best entrepreneurs on the planet Again, use speed of implementation, they have adversity as an advantage, and they are very decisive in what they do, and this is why they see results while everyone else is sitting there thinking about it and wondering, hmm, should I do that or not, right? All right, number six, immigrant mindset number six is that eagles fly alone, and I can tell you this, man, you are not a turkey, you are not a chicken, you are not a flock animal, you're an eagle, and eagles fly alone. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? Well, listen, as an entrepreneur, you think differently. You dream differently. You have way different vision. Do you think that when Elon Musk said, man, we're going to make cars that aren't just hybrid because I think that's weak. I think that's sissy shit. He said, I think cars need to be all electric and there's going to be electric charging stations all over the world. Don't you think people were like, dude, you're fucking nuts, right? So you're a dreamer. Or when he said, hey, we're going to colonize Mars. We're going to build a bubble around Mars somehow, and we're going to heat it up, and we're going to somehow get water and air there, and we're going to colonize it, right? Don't you think people go, Elon, you are fucking nuts. But guess what happens next? He does it. He does it, and then people go, holy smokes, this guy knows what he's talking about. So I can tell you this, that you do not need anyone's approval. When I said that I'm going to turn this little, little outdoor boot camp workout program into an international fitness franchise, and that it was going to get on the Inc. 5000 list, Everybody laughed at me. Today, we have 500 locations plus and growing. We are on the Inc. 5000 list. We are entrepreneurs' fastest, 500 fastest growing franchises on the planet. And guess what? 
I'm getting the last laugh. Eagles fly alone. I don't need anyone's approval. I don't need to be able to explain to them what my, what my reasoning is and wait for them to say, give me the nod that, yeah, they get it. And when they give me feedback, I just turn away, right? Because Tony Robbins said one thing, and he said, watch what everybody else is doing and do the opposite. And I believe that, man. I believe that, right? And so just remember, eagles fly alone. So if you think that you need everyone's approval, you need the whole flock's approval just to get shit done, forget about it. You are dead in the water if that happens. And last but not least, last but not least, I'm going to tell you something that my dad taught me, and that is to fall in love with the work. Immigrant edge pillar number seven is to fall in love with the work. And the reason for that is it's never about the destination. Sure, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk wants to buy the New York Jets. That's fantastic. That's just a carrot that he's got set out for himself. And I've even heard him say on a video that, listen, it doesn't matter if I'm buying the Jets or not. I don't know if I'm going to buy the Jets or not. But the man has fallen in love with the work that he does, right? I'll give you another example. Seinfeld, the man is worth half a billion dollars. I'll say that again. $500 million is Seinfeld's worth, half a billion dollars. And every year for the last 18 years, the two days after Christmas, he is on the stage at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas doing a great stand-up show. How do I know? Because I go to it. And I love it, and I enjoy it, and I love seeing him doing stand-up. And when he was on the Howard Stern show, Howard Stern asked Jerry Seinfeld, he said, you make, you make more money than you know what to do with because of all the residuals you're getting from the Seinfeld show. You got houses, mansions, cars, freedom. What are you doing still traveling the world doing stand-up? And he said, Howard, I've fallen in love with the work. Do you understand that? The man is not about a destination. The destination is great, and I'm sure at one point he was like, hey man, I love Porsches, I'm gonna have 100 different Porsches. And I love mansions, and I'm going to have 100 different mansions. And that's fantastic. But in the process, he's fallen in love with the work. And I always tell people when they ask me, how many Fit Body Boot Camps do you want worldwide? And you'll hear the number change. I'll say, oh, 2,000 locations by the year 2020, 2,500 locations by the year 2020, 3,000 locations by the year 2020. I don't know what that number is going to be, and I don't care. I just give you an answer because I just want to get people off my back. What I do know is I've fallen in love with the work of helping fitness business owners specifically Fit Body Bootcamp fitness business owners, make an impact in the communities they serve because through them, I get to be the top personal trainer on the planet. If each of them serve 200 to 400 to 500 clients in their communities, imagine the people that I'm serving through health and fitness and nutrition and mindset. And so guess what? It doesn't matter if we have 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 locations in my head. I've got somewhere between 2,000 and 3,000 locations as a landmark by the year 2020. But man, I have fallen in love with the work. I love the marketing that we do to get the leads and we take the best franchisee perspectives and then we convert them into owners and we teach them how to open up multiple locations so that they can make a bigger impact, make more money and change more lives. That is the work that I've fallen in love with. This is the work that I've fallen in love with. So fall in love with the work you do. Don't worry about the destination. The destination is fine, whether it's buying the jets or whether it's buying a jet. Set your goal out there and earn enough money to get there. Because I promise you, when Gary Vaynerchuk gets to the point where he can buy the Jets, whether it's enough money or he gets the opportunity, he may decide against it. But just to know that he set that milestone and achieved it is so satisfactory. That, there's just no greater satisfaction than that. And I can tell you this, that when I get to 3,000 locations worldwide, I'm going to have to set a new goal. 5,000, 6,000 locations because it's the work that I've fallen in love with and nothing else. All right, my friends, I will see you later. Peace and hair grease.